So let's start the afternoon session. Uh, Chris Talk from Johnson from Oklahoma State, and Ms. Franklin uh, is going to talk about non standard bio organs on one future tour. So, yes, I'm Dr. Johnson. Um, I'm an NSF ascend fellow at Oklahoma State and uh, at University of Chicago. And I first thank the organizers for the invitation to come and, uh, and speak here. And hope you guys enjoy some of the things that I am thinking about. Uh, so this is going to be joint work with Kenny Sagerman, my colleague at Oklahoma State. All right. So uh, I'm going to be working with uh, my order groups. So I'm just going to do some notation here. Um, uh, in there. Uh, so I'm going to consider things that are uh, my order groups. Uh, and here, the idea is that uh, this should be a left hand side, uh, is a body order. Um, and P is a conjugated variant positive tone. And just a reminder uh, uh, the conditions to be a conjugated variant positive tone, you want to be a, uh, a subset of your group that's closed on the multiplication. Uh, you want the union of that of the cone with its inverse and the divinity to give you everything. You don't want them to overlap. And in particular, I want to highlight that you want this uh, positive cone to be uh, invariant under conjugation. All right, and I'm not going to write this in the order. I'm assuming we're comfortable with that definition. Um, so, of course, a bio uh, on a group can be defined as a bio order as usual. You can also define it using the positive cone, which is just the positive elements. And that's a nice one-on-one -on -one correspondence between these two. All right. And of course, the group is bioorderable if it can be bioordered. Right. Um, and you know, we know some things that are bi bioordable. You know, totally the three immune groups, three groups are bioordable. Um, but I like to call myself a topologist. So I not, not, uh, mostly think about uh, uh, groups coming from uh, manifolds. So I guess I'll start by talking about this result. So it's a result by uh, Valsin and East. And uh, I have a date here somewhere. Uh, I have a one. It says that uh, non-trivial surface groups are uh, almost all bioidable. And the only uh, exceptions is the uh, from the group of the objective plane, and it's finite, so it's not even left -audible. And also the fundamental group of the uh, client model. Right. Um, and of course, this is well known for being uh, uh, one of the easiest spec groups, which is decorable but not bioidable. All right. Um, so that takes care of surfaces. Um, so I think about three manifold groups, right? That's what you do. You, when you get down with one number, you go up a number, right? So let's think about three manifold groups. All right. So well, three manifold groups, you sort of break down into two cases. Um, so it's the result of having and short, boy, you're also in least. Um, and the first one says that if I have a uh, three manifold with some reasonable uh, properties, so compact, connected, irreducible. And I'm going to just seek the orient open uh, for today. Um, then it turns out that um, the fundamental group of the manifold is uh, locally indicable. And this just means that uh, every finitely, ooh, I'm going to write this better. I can do better than that. Got to slow down. Um, uh, precisely when the the um, manifold has a positive phase value number. And what this means is that uh, 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 just right here, that, that uh, if a group is bioordable, it implies it's locally indicable, which implies it's left audible. So this means that uh, if you have a free manifold with positive phase value number, um, this tells you that your fundamental group uh, is always left audible, 
And oops, let me grab zero. And I would say that if it's a rational margin sphere, then your fundamental group is um, not bioitable. And I bring this up to sort of sort of explain this is the way the uh, um, the, the research in the audibility of female folds uh, sort of break down. You can think about things like rational margin spheres. And of course, that's the context where you have the airspace conjecture, which you guys have heard a lot about already. Um, and but when we think about things the positive identity number, um, in fact, the entire airspace conjecture is just not as interesting. Uh, all, the, all the property, well, depending on how you list it, that the never the airspaces, they always have clinical populations, the some of the always have affordable. So there's nothing, there's no knowledge really that you can really glean from that. So in this situation, exactly where you want to study bioordability. So there are some that you know have audible fundamental groups, some that don't. In the rational margin sphere, you know, we think about airspace conjecture type research, uh, bioordability never comes up, and this is why, because it's never bioordable. So there's never a question to think about for rational margin spheres. All right. All right, so I'm gonna be talking about bioordability today. So we're gonna be focusing on things with positive effect Betty number. I guess it's fine. All right. So Let's restrict to this case. So what does this tell us? So if you have a positive phase beta number, uh, it tells you that your fundamental group uh, projects some PV integers uh, at least one way, uh, possibly lots of ways. Um, and this is nice. Uh, let's call this map P. This is nice uh, because this actually implies uh, there's a fundamental group that's always a similar direct product um, with some group in, in the integers. Um, and the case in, uh, in here, uh, G is going to be uh, the, the kernel of this projection map. All right. Uh, and this is uh, actually a really nice uh, setup for studying bioavailability. Um, because it turns out in this uh, situation, the fundamental group uh, is bioordable. Um, I'm going uh, to put a, well, my, my, my map here. The uh, fundamental group is bioordable uh, precisely when you know the image of the generator, which is one. Um, you know, this is something in uh, G. Uh, this preserves some by order of. Uh, of G, all right? So, um, and I kind of wrote these different, I will try to say, say the yogi is bi-orderable, because uh, this is not saying that every bi-order on a group uh, can be built, you know, by, you know, using this, uh, this preserved by order but it's just saying that if this is true, then this is also true, uh, right? Okay. All right, so for the rest of this talk, we're going to be thinking about all right, how to use this to, uh, to you know, how do you, when do, um, um, given the, these maps, uh, when does this generator action observe the by ordering of uh, our kernel? Sorry, Jonathan. Yes. What, what does that say after the denominator? Something, because something in order. Yeah, this is a uh, capital fee of the generator, where fee is the, you know, is, oh, sorry. Okay. yeah. Thank you. Uh, let's just use the sport. All right. So let's take a look at the, at the example of um, porous bundles. Uh, no punctures yet. Um, there's lots of ways to think of a torus. One way is the, the typical portion of the, the real plane uh, with the, the inner uh, lattice. And then we can take a uh, homeomorphism of this torus, which corresponds uh, actually to uh, some map in uh, SL2Z. We use this to build our torus bundle. All right. So in this case, I got to remember to look at that again. So in this case, um, we get a uh, a nice description of the fundamental group. 
as a uh, similar particle z squared with z and I'm going to write this at a here where for now on I'm going to use the the uh um direction that I just write the image of the generator here so that tells you everything else about the about the representation all right all right so if we want to figure out which of these torus bundles are available, we just need to ask when does A preserve a binary ring of Z squared? All right. You don't go back there. I'm, I'm going to leave the other board alone. <laughs> so, if you want to think about binary rings of Z squared, um, this is exactly how you do it. Uh, you think of just uh, the real plane in Z squared, since that would be playing as a lattice. Uh, and we want to find it by picking the positive cone. And picking the positive cone, uh, is mostly comes down to uh, just picking a line through the origin. And once you have your line through the origin, uh, you can just find all the, the positive things to be the things on one side of that line, right? Um, sometimes this tells you everything you need to know, uh, like when the circle of the, the line is irrational. But when the circle of the line is rational, you might have some points left over. In that case, you might have to pick. So let's uh, draw these points in here. So when there's points on the line, we need to choose like exactly half of those points on the line uh, to be positive also. All right. Well, every uh, building of G-squared, they are not to do this. All right. So uh, when does A preserve this, uh, this binary? Well, first, we know that uh, a must preserve uh, a line L preserves the ordering, right? Uh, and A also must preserve uh, the uh, let's call this the <coughs> the half planes. Uh, the book uh, the half planes defined by L, so just the things that are you know, uh, and also. When the uh, the slope of L is rational, then uh, A must preserve uh, the rays of L, right? So when you're rational, you need to also preserve which side you chose of the L you chose to be the positive points. All right. So what does this tell us? Uh, this tells us that uh, we begin on two situations. So when the slope of L is uh, irrational, this tells us that uh, A has, well, it has one, actually, um, well, yeah, let's say, I say one. A has um, a real positive irrational uh, eigenvalue, right? If you have the line, so it only has an eigenvalue, it has to be uh, real. Uh, if there's no points here, it could be irrational, right? Um, and the reason you know it has to be positive is because it has to preserve sides. Uh, if it had a, if it didn't have any positive ones, then it couldn't preserve sides like this, all right? And if uh, the slope of L is uh, rational, um, then it has uh, two real positive rational eigenvalues. So in summary, we could say this. So A preserves a bio of Z2. Um, if and only if, well, we need for every, uh, we need for all the eigenvalues to either be real or positive. And in the case where you have in the rational eigenvalue, uh, it means that um, at least has a, uh, the, the eigenvalue at least has a real positive Gawa conjugate, right? It's the root of a polynomial that has a real positive root. So, so the so order the same as all the uh, eigenvalues of A uh, have a real positive uh, Gawa conjugate. Uh, and it turns out this is also uh, true if you just say, you know, a different color. 
This also generalizes for for every dimension. So if you pick something in SL N Z, link the side Z N, same statement is, is 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 true. All right. So it means that uh, for our terms down, our terms models we talked about before, uh, my ability really just comes down to the eigenvalues of of A because A is sort of is the homeomorphism. All right. Now, of course, I'm not doing models of torus bundles. I'm doing models of torus bundles with, with one boundary component. Oh, uh, see. What do you wish to see that? And also, feel free to ask questions. I like questions. Yeah. If you think the question is dumb, then you really ask it. I really like dumb questions. So now let's do a. Uh, actually, look more in general. So now let's say that uh, S is going to be a surface uh, with one boundary component. If you like to punch instead set of boundary components, it's fine to allow the networks out. Uh, I just like to have boundaries because they allow you a little more control over the constructions. For example, then I can say that uh, I can take uh, orientation preserving homeomorphism. My goal is to that it just fixes the boundary, uh, point wise, I should say. And now we can, uh, you know, Find the bundle in the analogous way, just like before. So in this case, uh, we still get our uh, we still get our similar direct product form of our fundamental group. So for now, this kernel is going to be a C group, which I'm going to call F. Uh, and I'm going to say this is H star. Uh, and here, F is a uh, High one of our surface, um, which is always going to be a uh, rank of price, uh, the genus of the surface free group. Yeah. And of course, A star is just the induced map in all down. Right. So this is not quite as nice as the situation before. Um, so as before, um, you know, uh, we had like a million groups and we had actually, and we, we know anything about that situation. Here we have automotions of a C group. And even if I ask you the question, what do all of the priorities of a C group look like? That's not really a hard question in and of itself, much less which of those are preserved by. Some about both of them, right? However, well, we can try to approximate our situation towards as best as possible. All right. The way we're going to do that is um, we can still look at uh, the induced map on the first homology, which I'll call op plus, uh, the first homology of the surface. And uh, the first homology of the surface, you know, this is uh, a free group, so. That's a profession tell us that our homology has to be uh, um, the homology has to be you know z to twice the genus. Uh, when you this is just um, um, this is I don't like this correctly. Um, this is a uh, naturally a subset of say uh, SL twice the genus z. Right. We need, we can still get a map which is sort of a, a matrix sort of map, right? And um, in order to simplify this, this talk of um, eigenvalues, I'm going to say that uh, uh, I want to find C plus just to be the uh, characteristic polynomial uh, of H plus. All right, so let's talk about some results that we know. Uh, results that some people in the audience should recognize. Uh, first, uh, if the roots of C plus are just the eigenvalues of H plus, right, uh, are real and positive, um, this implies that uh, H star preserves the by order of, uh, of F. And this was Perrin and Rawson. And a one. 
Uh, I think the eight star has been okay. Eight star, I'm thinking has been reduced map on the on the uh, fundamental groups. Oh, that's H plus. Oh, sorry, H plus. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Um, and then later it was shown that uh, if C plus um, factor as a uh, part of irreducibles with each FI uh, special, then that also implies the exact same thing. Um, and special here, uh, it means the uh, degree of FI is um, odd prime power. And we want uh, uh, the constant term to be uh, negative. So I was like this as FI zero is to less than zero. And also we need that all the roots are real. That's what special means. All right. Does that look right? <laughs> All right, and oh, this is by Lenovo Pula and Robson. And oh, wait, the data I have. And the third result is that if C plus has no real positive roots, then A star uh, does not preserve an order. This was done by Adam Clary and Walton. And the data I have here is 2012. So one thing that's interesting here with these results is that all of the results says that if I look at the eigenvalues or the characteristic polynomial of this not on homology, I can say something about orderability, right? Which in the Paris case is very natural because the the, the mix we're looking at was the homeomorphism, but this map on homology is not the same as looking at H star, right? There's a lot of information that's just not there. So the question is, uh, is it at all possible um, to, for there to be some necessary sophisticated condition just in terms of, you know, H plus or C plus? That's something that you can like dream about because there's, there's no reason why that should be true. Right. Which uh, one preserving at my order? Um, I may have to say, is H star preserving at my order? Uh, determined by um, H plus. That's the question. So I want to first note that. Here we're really talking about the situation where you have a uh, surface with one boundary component, right? If you uh, look at surfaces where you maybe have more boundary components, let's say you have a sort of thrice punctured uh, disk here, um, you can build two bundles, which I'm going to draw as a uh, uh, annual quotas of grades uh, like this. So that's one. Here's another. All right. So uh, this is certainly uh, bundle over n. You can see the disk here, and uh, you can you can uh, use these grades here to like actually define like actually do the same setup we actually leave as a homeomorphism. So you have a baby, you get a homeless into a disk. But the point is, um, uh, if you look at uh, the map on homology, uh, so in both of these cases, you get a similar direct product over the sequence of length three. Uh, but in, uh, but the map on homology, so map on homology is going to be uh, the same. It fixes uh, one generator and it swaps to other generators. Uh, but it turns out that uh, for this example, H star um, doesn't preserve order, preserve by order. And for this example, H star does. Uh, this is 
in in Boston. And I got to write the date. I want to say 18. Yeah. All right. So certainly if if we start leaving the, the, the realm of just having one dynamic component, then this is not true, right? These maps have the same H plus, but clearly something about H star is missing just from looking at the All right. So let's just start to make sure you have questions. Because yeah, if if you understand this question, then that you've gotten something you have to talk about. I hope that you get right. So now um, I'm going to focus a little bit on why these results end up being true. So uh, in both these cases, this is the, the way the proof uh, sort of works is that you construct these sort of standard by order. So we start by looking at the uh, the lowest central series. Uh, and here are the success of terms that, look at that the uh, generated by commentators of uh, alpha and something from the previous term. And this has uh, a couple of interesting properties. One is that uh, if I take two consecutive terms in quotient room, I always get a, um, a finite length C abelian group, which I'll call this Z to the N K. Uh, and maybe I just call this big AK. Uh, and we know that the intersection of uh, all your lower central series groups is trivial. And this information allows us to be able to buy order. Because um, what this focus information tells us, that each of these quotients uh, are by orderable. So that means it has some by order. So we're going to choose a by ordering, and by that I mean I'm going to choose a, you know, a, a positive column uh, for E J K, and this condition tells us that uh, every element of uh, of the C group is going to die at some point along the the, the central series. So the uh, element of the C group, we're going to get some. Wait a bit. Some integer, um, uh, where this uh, element dies. I think I'm going to write this as uh, G is in F A G minus F K G minus one plus one. There. So it's in F K G, but not F K G plus one. And with those two pieces of information, I can define a positive cone as follows. So the positive column is going to be the set of all the elements in the figure. Um, where if I look at the coset uh, corresponding uh, to the element, it's contained in the positive column um, of, of, that, of that cake. And this determines a, uh, a positive column for f. So one f is biodable. Um, this is not the way to do any bordering of F. So these borderings are called uh, the standard way. Yeah, I might as well write that. The way to have a standard order is that uh, I take a, a I'm going to first find this term. I'm going to take a subgroup that I call C. Um, let's do this in general for now. Let's take, I take a subgroup of a by order group. Uh, it's convex, and when you're convex, you can find this nicely just using positive columns. Uh, this means precisely um, if I take an element in our group, then uh, one of the following has to be true either uh, a group element is in our subgroup C, or the coset corresponding to the element is completely contained in the positive column. Or the uh, the coset completely contain the negative column, right? Yeah. Uh, so for subgroups, this corresponds to if you know the other definition of convex, this corresponds to that definition. All right. So another way of saying something is standard. That if I have a three group and a positive column, uh, I should say is standard. Uh, it's just the same as saying that. Uh, each FK is convex. 
this is another way of saying what's, what it means to be standard. All right, and here's the, the, the point. Uh, the point is, uh, the roots, I just said H plus here. Uh, H plus uh, determines when it's induced map H star preserves a standard order. So this kind of standard ordering, orderings, all we need to do is look at the map on homology. And it's basically a, a results because if you read the printer of Austin paper, uh, the eigenvalues on the induced maps on each of these portraits are just product of the eigenvalues of, of um, the A plus. Um, and, it's, and it's the products in such a way that um, knowing the, uh, the eigenvalues of A plus tells you the eigenvalues for any of these portraits. And if you know all eigenvalues for all these portraits, you know what it preserves Z and K, because that's just based on eigenvalues, like we like proved before, right? Or show before. Or we said before. Uh, so if you really want to answer this question, then we should really start looking at these non-standard orders. Because that's where the that's where the uh the interesting things must happen. Like like in this case, what must be going on here is that there's some non-standard order that this guy preserves and this one doesn't. Right? That has to be what's going on. So John, yes. This so this this fact you said H plus that there was an H star determines is this specifically for like this is for any bionic on F2. You take an automorphism. Sorry, on FN on the on like some yeah. Bring you take an automorphism and you look at its action on homology. That's okay, yeah. that's nothing to do with the fact that it's this is a purely on very statement. Oh, it's the same thing one more time. It has nothing to do with the fact that it's coming from a surface bundle or a Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this, I start at uh, uh, P30? Yes. Yeah. So this is kind of all just set up. What Henry and I decided to do is we want to try to understand these standard orders of, 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 of the free group. And, you know, there's a lot of free groups and there's a lot of actions on free groups. Uh, not standard orders. Uh, so we decided, like, all right, let's just look at the figure eight not complement. This is a surface bundle in this sort of way. You know, we we know what the the, the map is, the monodromy. Um, what are the non standard orders that this preserves? Because one thing that could be true, uh, it would be surprised if it is. One thing that could be true is perhaps in a lot of these cases, um, uh, you only preserve standard orders and that maybe that's why c plus is telling you all the all information uh maybe it's just really hard to preserve non-standard orders um i can guess the that that might be false based on the the title <laughs> uh of course you know when you do the figure not of a man you might as well think about a larger class uh let me tell you what this class is um so um my going, I guess, I'm going to do this uh, really quickly. Um, so as a reminder, um, uh, I'll just write this real quick. Uh, if you look at the, uh, if we look at our uh, module of the H, you know, it has this uh, designation using the Newton Thurston classification. So we know the H has to be uh, isotopic to either uh, some G, which is Periodic, which just means that some power of this uh, this homomorphism is the identity, or some G, which is what we call reducible, and that just means that you fix some like essential, some like uh, 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 circle in your surface, uh, and then we call it reducible. It kind of means that you can break apart your action into like smaller actions. Uh, the last one, uh, the last case is uh, D is true on mouse off. Uh, and this means that uh, G has these um, special type of laminations, which is, uh, is preserving. And I, I just stop there. I won't go into more, more detail. Uh, the point is, we're we'll, we'll looking at these in this, in this last case. Uh, of one thing to know that if Case where H is uh, isotopic something that is thrown on us off, it means that our manifold uh, has a hyperbolic structure. 
All right. So now we can state some actual results. So let's suppose that the genus of our surface is only one, uh, and that um, you know, our I just say that our M is hyperbolic, which just means that our, our map is I stop something to see the mouse off. In this case, um, I want to say actually before I say exactly the results, I want to think something that's important uh, to keep in mind. Uh, so if I uh, take our fundamental group and I look at any order, uh, so here P is any by ordering. Um, then it turns out uh, that the uh, fundamental group of the, the, the surface, the fiber, um, is always convex. And again, this is special to the case where you have one bounding component. You have no bounding components, it's not true. But you have one bounding component, uh, then this is always convex. And what that means is that in, in our case, if I have any by ordering, right? Um, I have any by ordering of this, uh, this surface bundle group, um, then the way that by ordering has to look is, okay, you look at like how many times the mind drone is going around and, and if, you know, the same, then you start comparing inside the fiber. That's how any by ordering for, for these work. All right, so I just want the, to point that out, just something to remember. Uh, what, is, what is F here? Oh, F is, I already it, but F is the, uh, um, so we have our surface bundle, right? Our super the fiber. It's a group of the, the fiber. So the question we want to answer is like, okay, how, how different from a uh, non-standard order, I mean, how different from a standard order can you look? Uh, first, um, Let's suppose uh, A star preserves a, uh, a by order, we're going to call P. Uh, maybe I'll call it P uh, just to emphasize that this is now a positive cone of, uh, of F. Um, and it turns out that in this case, uh, F2 uh, is always convex. All right. So remember, being standard means that the entire motion of the series convex. So this tells you that uh, if I just uh, take any by ordering, uh, so for example, the figure in my complement, uh, then if I'm looking at sort of this like first step inside the fiber, I have to do exactly what a standard order does, right? I can't do any sort of non standard things. Secondly, um, if C is a, um, I'm going to write this first. Find it later. We'll see some uh, maximal uh, convex subgroup of F2. And I'm going to write this order as EF intersect F2. And then I get the positive cone of the, small, of the lower guys. All right. And by maximal, it just means that, uh, you know, if you have a convex guy that contains it, it has to either be the same as the group or, the, or it has to be the same as F2, right? Yeah. So in this case, uh, then, you got that, then you get that C has to be equal to F3. So what this is saying is that, all right, so we found the bit of order. One way you can think of doing this is just sort of, you know, picking out these convex subgroups and looking at quotients that are being in picking orders there. It says that, okay, uh, and actually we need to show that this F2 is going to be maximal. So really the first step that you have to do is pick F2 two and portion up by that and look at the order on that first quotient. And it says that, okay, if you want to do something like pick some subset, some subgroup of F2, the C, and quotient out by that and then pick some ordering there. Well, if you want to do it that way, exactly, then that thing you pick has to be F3, all right? Um, uh, but the whole point here is that you're trying to do this in sort of these like discrete steps sort of way. Uh, another, you can't actually uh, get a binary that doesn't look standard, but you have to do something that's like not so discrete. Uh, so the last thing I'll say is that uh, 
if a star does preserve a bio ring um, of F, then uh, a star uh, does preserve a non standard order um, with um, F3 uh, not convex. And I guess I'll formally say a couple of things about how this works. So, um, so F, that's a reminder, is pi one of this um, four to one boundary. Um, this was S in this case. And we can look at the uh, covering space corresponding to the commutative subgroup, this abelian cover. We just get this sort of, you know, own plane, right? And basically, what you want to do to check the non standard order um, is uh, if you let's do some colors. Uh, yeah, let's do some colors. Uh, so, if I want to talk about fundamental group, I need to pick a base point. I'm going to pick a base point, which is on this bounding point here. All right. Um, so if I look at the homology of, of S hat, well, let me say this first. So I can look at the element given by this bounding component. I can call this say gamma zero zero, once I have my preferred base point. Um, and the homology of S hat is uh, generated by the classes uh, what do I call gamma MN, where MN just tells you how much you shift our initial boundary component. So this is gamma one zero, this is gamma zero one. All right, and so the way we kind of define this order is the first to find uh, an ordering on the first homology. And what's really interesting uh, that makes this, makes this work is that if I look at the and this map of the money drum on the first homology, uh, it has the exact same sort of behavior as the map on the, the surface homology uh, on, on the basis, on this basis. Um, and so, uh, and so, uh, so in other words, the look at the induced map of the money drum, it's going to move these, so this one ends up being fixed, and the other one sort of get moved around in this sort of pseudo and off action. And what that means, if they can the ordering of this basis, there's like plays well with the monodromy. And then we can use that to construct an order. Um, but the order, if you think about it, is not going to have this sort of maximal convex subgroup situation. Because you get this sort of, you know, infinite family of convex subgroups, which is sort of limiting to the uh, entire FF2. And, and of course, you know, you got to do something to order, you know, the, the third term of the derived series, F2, F2. But that's not, that's not, the most interesting part that, 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 that you can do. But this is the key that, that how the order works. And I think that's all I'm going to say. Great. Um, question. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I forget. Is, do you think from these techniques, there's any hope of saying how these new bio orders sit inside the space of all bio orders? Um, or is there any? I mean, you have flexibility yeah. to make new orders, and the question of if it's isolated or not is all about making other orders that are in your body. So, right, right. That's a good question. I'm not that sure. So, like, um, my, into, my intuition is that, um, that I don't know if it's going to help you get like so sort of isolated sort of arguments. Um, because, you no, know, this, you still end up sort of doing this ordering when you do like, uh, you know, you get back to the live series and, and then you still have like the rest of the, the group to order. And I think you can still like play around with things further down in the series to get something that looks close to, close to this. So, it not that mean that there's no isolated order that does this, but I think there's going to need to be some other technology in order to make that type of argument. Uh, this right here is, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see exactly how this technology is going to say something about being, being isolated or not. Yeah. Yes. Oh, so. So the second theorem here, mm -hmm. uh, so if it preserves a by order, then it sort of also preserves a non-standard one. Mm -hmm. So, so I guess are there still no examples of non uh, of 
Anatomorphic is the only preserved non-standard biomorphics, um, or is that not possible? So, in this situation, that is still not known. Um, however, uh, I want to spend more time and get more into it. What's interesting about this situation is that uh, the way we built this order still sort of uses this modern map in homology very strongly. So, um, I. Uh, I I suspect that at least at this level, it might still be the case that um, the the H plus is going to have severe restrictions on a top of its non-standard order you can preserve. It has to like play well with this sort of this sort of monogamy picture. Uh, it's, so at least in the hyperbolic case, seems like even like going to these like weird sort of constructions, you're not getting away from like the H plus action. Yeah. What if you know, uh, what if the base curve is now? I mean, instead of that, you look at the joint like those sort of things. Uh huh. What about like what do we what do you know about it? Yeah, so, uh, um, um. So, so if the the argument from the argument of the uh, results we said earlier, uh, those argu arguments were very similar. They still have this property. You know, they still have this property that if you look at the lowest interest series, you get the executive quotients that are like a million and there. So you can still see the same sort of standard order picture. And you get the same sort of results about them being preserved based on like this H plus. Uh, I haven't thought about the like non standard picture as much though. Yeah. That's a good question though. Yeah. It would be like at the start, you're giving us a recipe for deciding whether a given corresponding was quite orderable or not. Um, yeah, that's that would be nice if it, if it, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. I mean, that's um, you mean just for in this case, for a Taurus, oh, for a Taurus, yes, yeah, okay, yeah, for a Taurus, we have no boundary points, right? Yeah, 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 okay. And so that doesn't extend to other types of surfaces. I kind of guess it's sort of the same question. I see. Yeah, I see. Uh, yeah, it doesn't quite extend to other type of surfaces. I mean, in in the case we have more than one component, it is just not true, right? We have ten examples. So, um, so yeah, the you know, I I still sort of suspect the answer even for these examples that is not true. I, that's what I expect to happen. Yeah. That's not true. That uh, there's, I'm sure there's going to be like two, uh, two of these uh, surface bundles uh, with one boundary where they have the same map on H plus, but maybe one preserves north and another one doesn't. Right. Like this information that we're we're losing in this quotient, I think I think it's going to be important at some point. Uh, it is when we have more than one boundary component, but I think it's still probably important here too. All right, great. So let's thank Ben.